In my 2012 review, I explored the role healthy diet may play in preventing, treating, and reversing our deadliest diseases. In 2013, I covered our most common conditions. This year, I'd like to address some of our leading causes of disability. Alzheimer's disease perhaps best captures the difference between lifespan and health span. Who cares if you live to be 100 if in the final years you don't recognize yourself in the mirror? In 1901, Augusta was taken to an insane asylum by her husband. She was described as a delusional, forgetful, disoriented woman who tragically could not carry out her homemaking duties anymore. <laughs> she was seen by a Dr. Alzheimer and was to become the case that made his a household name. On autopsy, he described the plaques and tangles that would go on to characterize the disease, but lost in the excitement of discovering a new condition, a clue may have been overlooked. He described arteriosclerotic changes, hardening of the arteries within her brain. And we typically think of artery clogging in the heart, right? but as we saw with the spine and the nerves, atherosclerosis involves virtually the entire human organism, our whole vascular tree from top to bottom, including our brain. One of the most poignant examples of the systemic nature of clogged arteries is the link between coronary heart disease, degenerative brain disease, and Alzheimer's, dementia. Just as a heart attack or brain attack stroke can be significantly prevented, one can think of Alzheimer's as a mind attack. Mind attack, like heart attacks and strokes, need to be prevented by controlling vascular risk factors like high blood pressure and cholesterol, controlling chronic blood hypoperfusion, the lack of adequate blood flow to the brain in the years before the onset of Alzheimer's. We now have a substantial body of evidence strongly associating atherosclerotic vascular disease with Alzheimer's. Autopsy studies, for example, have shown that individuals with Alzheimer's significantly more atherosclerotic narrowing of arteries within their brain. This is what cerebral arteries should look like, open, clean, allowing blood to flow. This is what atherosclerosis in our brain arteries looks like. Clogged with fat and cholesterol, closing off the artery, restricting blood flow within our brain. What kind of arteries do you want in your brain? This reduction in blood flow can starve the brain of oxygen, causing these silent little mini-strokes, brain atrophy, shrinkage. The cumulative effects appear to play a pivotal role in the development of Alzheimer's. Uh, but what about the role of metals in Alzheimer's? Well, the metals appear to just aggravate the detrimental effects of the high intake of saturated fat and cholesterol. What about the so-called Alzheimer's gene, APOE4? Diet trumps genes. The highest frequency of Alzheimer's gene in the world is Nigeria, but they also have some of the lowest Alzheimer's rates. To understand why, one has to understand the role of APOE. What does the gene do? The Alzheimer's gene makes the principal cholesterol carrier in the brain. But if your cholesterol is low enough, because your diet is low enough in animal fat, if you center your diet, around grains and vegetables, then changes in cholesterol can lead to changes in gene expression. Just because we've been dealt some bad genetic cards doesn't mean we can't reshuffle the deck with diet. According to the latest guidelines for the prevention of Alzheimer's, the two most important things we can do is cut down our consumption of meat, dairy, and junk, and replace them with vegetables, beans, fruits, and whole grains. That's the best science we have on the prevention of Alzheimer's disease. Wait, grains protective of the brain? I had the distinction this year of serving on a panel with green brain author Dr. Perlmutter, who sold lots of books claiming carbs are destroying our brain, but what does the science show? Take Japan, for example, where the prevalence of dementia has shot up over the last few decades, and the blame for this increase in Alzheimer's 
increases in animal products. Traditional diets weighed towards vegetable uh, products like grains away from animal products, but since 1960, the diet in Japan has changed from more traditional rice-based diet to one with a preponderance of meat. So less grain equaled more Alzheimer's. The dietary factor most strongly associated with Alzheimer's was the consumption of animal fat. So the link between diet and dementia can be characterized less as grain brain and more as meat head. <laughs> A similar analysis in China arrived at the same conclusion. On the basis of these findings, the rates of Alzheimer's disease and dementia will continue to increase unless dietary cha patterns change to those with less reliance on animal products. This is consistent with data that's showing that those who eat vegetarian are two to three times less likely to develop dementia. And the longer one eats meat-free, the lower one's risk falls. In fact, where are the lowest rates of Alzheimer's in the world? Rural India. Maybe no coincidence that the, lowest, the country with the lowest rates of Alzheimer's has among the lowest rates of meat consumption. About 40% eat meat-free and egg-free diets that are high-grain, high-bean, high-carb diets. Population studies have found a protective, strongly protective role of uh, grains in relation to Alzheimer's disease and including gluten-containing grains, not just rice. The science shows the exact opposite of what might one might read in the popular press. In other words, don't pass on the grain, pass the grain to spare the brain. <laughs> the link between arterial blockage and Alzheimer's is good news because atherosclerosis can be prevented and treated, so maybe Alzheimer's can be prevented and treated, uh, treated as well. Well, let's put it to the test. If you follow people who are just starting to lose their mental faculties, the cognition of those with the least artery clogging in their brain remains pretty stable over the years. But those with more cholesterol buildup got worse, and those with the most blockage rapidly declined. And the same with the ability to carry out activities of daily living, like dressing oneself. Uh, and arterial disease doubled the progression to Alzheimer's. In summary, an inefficient blood supply to the brain can have very grave consequences on brain function. But does treatment of vascular risk factors, like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, make a difference? We didn't know until now. 300 patients with Alzheimer's and those with their vascular risk factors treated showed significantly less decline, slowed progression of their disease. It is often said that the goal of medicine is to provide patients with hope, and when there's no hope, to offer understanding. Well, for the first time in the history of this, this disorder, we have the chance to provide Alzheimer patients with hope.